Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to the US once again and we're going to go to one of the quite highly regarded beer states. So for this review we're going to Denver in Colorado and this is a brewery who I've not reviewed anything from in quite some time actually. It's only my second review from these guys. So for this one we're going to go to Great Divide Brewing Company and today we're having a taste of the Claymore which is their Scotch Ale. So it comes in at 7.7% and it should be pretty nice. This is one one that I've been wanting to review for a wee while actually. As I've told you a number of times on the channel, I love reviewing Scotch ales from different parts of the world. One of the best ones I had was actually from Boda Brown in Brazil. That's one of the best Scotch ales I've had. Old Parochial from Tempest here in Scotland is a really, really good one as well. And, uh, you know, of course you've got the the, the bastard ones from uh, from Founders Brewing Company in, uh, in Michigan as well, which are always really quite good. So looking forward to trying one. I think this might be the first one I've tried from Colorado if memory serves correctly. So looking forward forward to this and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do from Great Divide in the near future I'm definitely not going to leave it two years this time there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state County Prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that are reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Great Divide Brewing Company then, on to my brewery notes. So as I mentioned to you earlier, Great Divide are based in Denver in Colorado and they were founded back in 1990 by Brian Dunn. So Brian Dunn had previously worked in developing countries and helped establish farms in uh, the late 1980s, but he returned to Colorado and began home brewing while attending a graduate school. But Brian said he'd grown up in a family that really appreciated good food and drink, and upon his graduation in 1993, he decided to follow through with his hobby and turn it into a profession. And he was aided by his friends and alone from the city of Denver, and the brewery officially opened in 1994 in the ballpark neighbourhood of the city. In 2000 and one they moved to a new building which used to be a former dairy plant and they bought five acres of land in the River North neighbourhood and this was actually where they started to expand and this new facility opened in 2015 and it looks really really nice if you look at the pictures of it it looks like really quite impressive they've got a nice brewery a nice kind of brewery tap room and uh, and restaurant there as well which looks really really cool and they've got quite a few different beers they've got loads of different ones and they've got a few different series and things like that as well of course probably the most famed beer that you'll get from these guys is the yeti and they've done a whole lot of things with aging it in different barrels and uh, and all of these kind of things so the yeti is a beer that i still need to review at some point but that's one that's fairly easy for me to find in Sweden so I will make sure that I do that when I head back over there in a couple of weeks time but yeah this is one as I say that I've wanted to try for quite a wee while and uh, that's all you really need to know about the brewery for the moment so if you want to learn a little bit more check out the brewery website in the description below and you can follow them on Facebook and keep up to date with all the latest goings on so yeah let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one then before we open it up there you can see there's the guy with his claymore down there. The claymore, of course, is an old Scottish two-handed sword made famous really by William Wallace, who was one of the national heroes of Scotland. He was the guardian of Scotland, I think. I forget which years it was, but he died in... Um in around 1305 um, so yeah so it's his sword the claymore and a lot of the statues you'll see of William Wallace he had the claymore there but the tartan on this is quite interesting it's actually not too far away from my family's tartan which is a, a blue and, uh, and sort of emerald a sapphire and emerald kind of colour as well but really nicely presented beer this one like I said 7.7% scotch ale there you can see there's a bigger guy with the claymore on the back there the clansman with his claymore there you can see the great divide brewing sub company symbol on this one but yeah like I say 7.7% scotch ale um, the last beer I reviewed from Great Divide Brewing was the um, the Old Ruffy and Barley Wine which I really quite enjoyed and I'd never seen this one, I'd heard of it but I'd never actually um, come across this beer before but I saw it in the Fierce Bar when I was up in Aberdeen visiting some friends the other day and I thought oh you know I've heard of this one I really need to get a can of this so I was really glad 
that I was able to get a hold of it. Like I say, I like trying Scotch ales from different parts of the world. One of the best ones I ever had was from Boda Brown in Brazil, and I've had some really good ones, you know, the Bastard series from Founders in America. This is the very first one I'm trying from Colorado. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this beer has poured a really, really dark, um, I would say a really dark sort of chestnut colour there. That's one of the darkest Scotch ales I've ever actually seen. So as you can see with this beer, there's about a half finger of a frothy, kind of um, beige head. It's quite a dark beige head, this one. Um, but there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head there. But, you know, overall, it looks pretty nice. As I say, one of the darker Scotch ales that I've come across. I think it's fair to say that this beer is a sort of Coca-Cola, um, dark chestnut type colour. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see with this one. That's quite unusual, that. One thing I should also say about the Scotch ales, I always say it in the videos, the Scotch ale is quite a broad style. In Scotland, we always had the 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90 shilling beers. As you went up the scale, the um, the malt content and the and thus the alcohol increased. And it was all to do, the shilling thing was all to do with the tax that was on the beers. And most of the American um, Scotch ales that are produced over there, they're somewhere between an 80 and a 90 shilling a lot of the time. Although... The one that I had from uh, Three Floyds recently, the Robert the Bruce, that was more along the lines of a 70 shilling. But usually the American ones are a little bit more sugary and sweet than the Scottish, the original Scottish ones, which are a little bit more toasty, um, which is kind of interesting. But we'll see how we get on with this one. I'm really curious about it because of how dark it is. But let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this. Ooh, yeah. Right. So with this one... There's actually quite a bit of chocolate coming out of this, and this is one of the things I should say. The original Scottish Scotch Eels never really had chocolate malt or anything like that in them. This is something that seems to have developed a little bit since the style has gone to America. And I do like the American Scotch Eels. I really do like them, but they are quite different a lot of the time from what the, uh, the original Scottish ones would be. But yeah, for me, this one's got a good bit of chocolate. There's a good bit of that brown sugar in there that you expect. It's got a kind of darker treacle, molasses type thing to it, this beer. And it's a bit toasted as well. There's a little bit of a sweeter caramel in there too. A little bit of a biscuity hint to the beer. And definitely there's some kind of brown bready note to it as well. And that, again, is what you expect. You do expect a Scotch ale to have a, a slightly kind of grainy base to it. But I would say, yeah, brown bread bit of biscuit, sweet caramel, the sort of slightly darker treacle molasses kind of thing going on, a little bit toasted as well. And then there is a bit of chocolate in this one, which as I say, that's the more kind of unusual thing for a Scotch ale for me. Obviously I'm used to drinking the traditional ones right enough, but yeah, for me, th this beer, this, this um, aroma is all about the malt base, which again is what you'd expect. In terms of the hops, there's a wee bit of a, an earthy hoppy quality to this one. You can pick out a little bit of grass as well. And there's some red fruity notes. For me, the red fruits, um, it's quite a candied red fruit note, this beer, I would say. It's, it, yeah, it's kind of a candied red fruit, more than anything. But yeah, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get um, stuck into it. It does smell really, really nice. So yeah, let's just see how we get on with this one then. I've been looking forward to this. So this is the Claymore, a Scotch ale at 7.7% from Great Divide Brewing Company in Denver and Colorado over in America. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, skull. Yeah. That's pretty nice, actually. I'll say that. Well done to Great Divide. Yeah, I mean, it's a good beer, this. What I would say about it is, it's different from the, it, it is different from the traditional, from the Scottish brewed Scotch ales that I've had. But it's quite different from the other American ones that I've had as well, which is quite interesting. As I say, the Scottish ones, tend, <coughs> pardon me, tend to be a little bit more kind of roasty and toasty and a bit more grainy, biscuity kind of sweetness. The American ones I've always found have been quite caramelly 
and uh, also the, the red fruits have just been a little bit kind of sharper and things like that in them. And um, this one, it's it, the, the chocolatey presence in this one is quite interesting. As I say, that's not something I've really come across in a Scotch ale before. I've had ones that have been kind of peated and stuff like this, but I've not had one that's had the chocolatey presence that this one does. But I will say that as a beer, I do like this one. Although, you know, we can talk about styles all day and whether it fits into the style category. I'm not sure if um, you can you can kind of still class this one as a, as a Scotch ale. It does definitely have elements of the Scotch ale, but for me, the sort of chocolatey malt, and I think there's a wee touch of a black malt in this one, just a very, very slight touch. I'm not sure how it fits into that. It's kind of interesting, but as a beer, it is a good beer, and I do like it. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again, but, you know, style isn't important for me, to be honest. It's more about how good the beer is, and the beer is good. Yeah. So with this one, I would say, you've got a little bit You've got the mi middle of your palate where all these multi flavours are going to come out. You've got a nice kind of brown bready quality to this beer. That just blankets the middle of your palate. As you progress further and further into the aftertaste, there is a wee tiny touch of a black malty character to this one. You start to get the chocolatey flavours coming out of the beer as it matures on the palate a little bit. But you've got a nice dark kind of brown sugar quality to this one. As I was saying, there's kind of treacle and molasses to this one. You can feel that underneath. And as you go for, from the centre of the palate out towards the sides, you start to get a little bit of the biscuity kind of grainy note to the beer as well, which is nice. But yeah, the way the flavours in the beer go together... It's really, really nice as well. And it's all this one's all about how the flavours kind of blend together. The way the chocolate blends into it is actually really nice. As I said, that's a little bit unusual for a Scotch ale, I would say, but the way that it actually goes into the flavour, it's nice. You definitely get a bit of that chocolatey quality right in the middle of your palate. And I would say it's not quite a milky chocolate. I would guess it's somewhere, it's probably somewhere around the sort of 60, 50, 60 percent uh, cocoa type chocolate that it's somewhere in the middle. There's a little touch of a milkiness to it, but it's, it really leans a little bit more towards that. And that, I think it gives the beer the impression a little bit that's got a little bit of that roasted black malt in it. I do suspect that there's a little bit of that in there, particularly when you consider um, the colour of this one. Um, and well, of course, if there's chocolate malt in it as well, that could contribute. Um, but the malt base in this one is really nice. As you go further forward on the palate a little bit, just behind where you get the, the fruitiness from the hops, there's a little touch of a, a, a woody note to this one, and it maybe evolves to be a little bit nutty as well. Um, so just pay attention towards the front of your palate, you will get a little touch of a kind of nutty, um, woody flavour, I think, coming out of this beer. On the hoppy side of things, it is pretty much what you'd expect. Back corners of the palate, you've got a little touch of earthiness there. It kind of spreads forward. It's very, very smooth, actually. And as you come towards the front corners of the palate, you do get a little touch of a grassy note. And then round the very front curve of the palate, it is pretty much straight up and just a little bit light and grassy. That slight earthiness builds a good bridge with the biscuity malts and things that are in the beer. Behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. For me, the fruity character in this one, um, it's got a mix of everything. Yeah. It's got a little bit of that kind of candied red fruit that you expect, you know, like the little heart sweets in the, uh, in the Haribo Star Mix. It's got a little bit of that. There's a little bit of a figgy note to it as well, and I think it's got just a little bit of a kind of raisin, a raisiny sharpness to it as well, which is nice. So I would definitely say this beer, it, it's got a really nice blend of flavours. That's the thing for me. The unusual point, like I mentioned, is the kind of presence of the chocolatey malt, because that's not something I've come across all that often in the the Scotch ales. For me, the Scotch ales, it's all more about the kind of grainy notes and the uh, and, and the sort of caramel flavours, if you like. But they've done a nice job of this, and it is a good beer. I'll say that about this one. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, for me, mid-bodied beer, carbonation is really smooth. The mouthfeel leans more towards the oily side than anything else. 
yeah, oily mouthfeel for me in this one, and that's what you'd expect from the style. The hops are quite smooth in this one, and you've got it really leans towards the malty side of things. You've got a nice balance in the malt base. It leans towards the sweet side, the, the sweet side of it, and um, but there is a little bit of a I think there's a wee touch of a black malt there that kind of balances it out a little bit, but that's very very small. You've got a good balance between sweetness and smoothness in the malt base, and you've got a little touch of a juicy fruity character in here as well but overall a really really nice beer I'm glad I got to try this one because as, as I say it's one that I've heard a lot about and uh, these guys in Europe a lot of people say you know Great Divide are really good when it comes to the slightly heavier styles of beer the more malt forward things and um, you know I would agree with that I really enjoyed the old ruffian you, have, you let that age a little bit and it's a beautiful beer this one is um, is yet another good beer and as I say the Yeti is one that I still need to try so I'll make sure I review that beer when I get back to Sweden but um, you know really glad that I got to review this one and uh, it, it certainly is a pretty good beer. It takes a different angle on the Scotch which is always cool. It is cool to see your sort of native beer style being played with and experimented a little bit and you know Great Divide have produced a really interesting beer with this one and I do, I do like the name for it, the Claymore and um, with the, the pardon me the two-handed sword it's kind of cool that the tartan is quite similar to mine as well but yeah really nice beer and i'm glad that i got to review this one so let's leave it at that once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below let me know what your favorite beers are from great divide as well if you have got any other colorado scotch ales that you'd recommend for me to try do let me know those as well or let me know other ones from other states as well it's always cool to try Scotch ales from different parts of the world, so that's one of the things I really love doing on the channel. But thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out my social media. This was the Claymore Scotch Ale from Great Divide Brewing Company in Denver in Colorado. A great beer state, and one that I really do hope I can go and visit at some point in the near future. Until the next time, slanger just now, and I will catch you guys very soon. School.